the latest paper on the ever contentious issue of corporate social responsibility, CSR by Cass Business School, has concluded that the whole thing, the whole market, is essentially being created by management consultants. The men behind this study are Jean Pascal Gond and Luc Bess. Jean Pascal, is this really true? Just a job creation scheme for management consultants? Uh, actually, uh, this has been one of the critiques of this market at the beginning because a lot of people were seeing that as a new form of commodification, like the invasion of market processes or consultants into a new domain, which is quite sensitive from a social and environmental viewpoint. Uh, actually, part of this critique is fair in consultants are really contributing to develop new markets out of social issues and environmental issues. But I would say that looking at that only critically is like looking at a glass uh, half empty. And you can also look at the same glass half full. In so doing, consultants are also uh, developing new types of roles that are quite interesting from, a society, from the society's viewpoint and from the CSR viewpoint. But they are doing their work for selfish reasons? Of course, they are doing it for selfish reasons and they are really uh, trying uh, to build a new market, to make money out of that. And this is the classic critique about CSR commodification. What we wanted to highlight here is that in commodifying corporate social responsibility, consultants also contribute to socialize or re-socialize market to society by playing three specific roles. The first role is they play a role of translation. They translate those social and environmental issues in a language that business people are able to understand and are able to mobilize to act upon those different issues. So this is their first role. So of course, people could criticize and say, yes, they translate, but only in the extent to which it will be of interest for them, which is a partially true critique, as we have seen. Uh, the second role that they play is that they indirectly contribute to enact regulations in so doing, and in particular, they enhance the strengths of all this soft law, and sometimes they even contribute to relate or to bridge the soft law to hard laws. So in so doing, they are very softly and indirectly uh, regulating uh, business people in the, the extra-financial domain, in the social or environmental domain, and the third role they play is that they contribute to expand progressively uh, the scope of interest for CSR issues by broadening uh, the borders uh, of their market. Nonetheless, CSR is immensely controversial. Your paper is just going to be more ammunition for those people who are critical of CSR, isn't it? Uh, I don't think so, because, uh, I mean, in a sense, uh, the, there is a lot of truth in this critical perspective and we should look at the work uh, engaged by CSR consultants uh, with, a, with skeptical eyes. Uh, we cannot take that as, you know, we cannot assume that they will uh, work only uh, for the best uh, interest of the rest of the society and so on. However, we think that the, the story is much more complex that a simple uh, new story of CSR commodification. We think that there is uh, something uh, different uh, at play here. We think that you can hardly marketize society without also re-socializing uh, some market actors. And this is really what we try to capture with that. Um, things are getting hybridized. We are creating new products and new services that embed business interest together with some forms of social and environmental interest. So wh what is emerging here is new to some extent, according to our research. If I can turn to Luke. Luke, give me an example where your theory is doing good in the world. There is one case in the paper which is about a responsible event. And I think it's a nice illustration. So you can see how this was developed actually first by feminist women in the 90s, at the end of the 90s. And one of the critics we have uh, on uh, those CSR markets is that actually they are niche markets. So really like you're going to buy your organic food uh, at the supermarket, that's fine, you're well off, but it's not a mass consumption uh, type of effect, it's just niche market. And those, uh, those organizations, it's very interesting to see how they manage to enlarge the boundary of the market. So they first start to work for a sustainable event, but those were very big events such as the Jazz Festival in Montreal. And then they reflect, and for business reasons, they, they start to realize, wait a second, why don't we manage venue uh, as well? So they enlarge the first time, and then mm. they reflect again on the very notion of event. 
and they realized that actually you have many business events. So any business meetings is an event. So they started to enlarge this market again and again. So, and now they are thinking about private events such as weddings, stuff like that. So they kind of you know make it mainstream, or they, they are mainstreaming in in a sense. And it shows that uh, their initiatives has grown over the time through their business activity and running a better business at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Luke Bess, Jean-Pascal Gond, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very thank you much. So much. Thank you.